right, guys. Welcome back. Dropping the needle. Episode 11 slash 12, motherfuckers. Um, <laughs> me and Adam decided that um, we're, we're, we've been trying to talk about when we're going to do Radiohead as a, as a thing. And it just so happens that we're said Radiohead's first, like, what did we say, Adam? Five albums are, it's one thing. So we've decided that we're going to do the Kid Amnesia two-parter. We're going to split it at some point and then, you know, keep going, whatever. And then you can check it out in June. But for May 2022, this is part one of the Kid Amnesia episode of Dropping the Needle. So, Adam, do you have any initial thoughts? Because we're going to talk about, like, uh, Radiohead's Radiohead from Pablo Honey to all the way up until In Rainbows in this particular uh, span of two episodes. Do you have any any uh, thoughts right now? I mean, yeah, but it's like, I mean, it's like, where do you start? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like the progress. I mean, like the real, the biggest thing about Radiohead is the, is the progression and how they've always each, you know, if you think about it, decades now have like re not necessarily reinvented themselves but progressed like you know to a point yeah. where you could i guess you could call it almost the reinventing of themselves but they just progress with like what's you know happening and like kind of like on the forefront of what's happening mm-hmm. you know top york's always been good at like trying to find new styles of music to be inspired by Mm-hmm. And then you know Johnny Greenwood, you know, like his career's taken off, like and you know doing scores for movies and films, you know. So yeah, it's been interesting to watch too. Do you? All right. Um, before I get and ask you my next question, girl. Here's my next question. What, what are you sipping on, my dude? Oh, that juicer, that classic, oh. always. Ooh, that juicer. Ooh, and who makes that juicer? Let's, let's, let's remind the, the crowd. Gnarly barley. That gnarly barley. Yes. Go go Let's ahead. Talk about go that ahead. Artwork. Oh, look at that. Little 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 guy. Little lickety. Little lickety split on there. Oh so, um oh shit. That's nice. So um I don't know if you saw, but I got this big boy. <laughs> this, is that beard iris? No. This is no. a tenfold, <laughs> tenfold brewing. Oh uh, nice. Yeah. Tenfold brewing. Howling winds. Got a shale. It's a 5.6. Yeah, 5.6. And as you can see, this is a crowler. Um, and I plan on drinking this whole crowler during this episode <laughs> or these episodes. So uh, this was so uh, a few weekends ago. Uh, your girl, Brittany Fernandez, and the good homie, Kenny from uh, Anyone Could Die. And me and Meg went to dinner at Tenfold. Tenfold has a bunch of good food. Uh, it's a local natural brewery located, located in like, uh, I don't know, Northeast, I guess you could call it. Uh, Nashville. This shit is, I, I know you can't see it. I'm not going to tilt it because it will spill. But like, you know when no. you crack something and it's like, it's on the edge of the can. Ooh, That's nice. what this is right now. It's, it's full as fuck. <laughs> So, um, yeah, we went and had a dinner and they, they make like good pizzas and good apps and shit. And, um, nice. and they, they have their brewery on site. So I have liked them. Oh, oh almost fucked up. <laughs> um, I've liked them for a while and, oh, oh, shit. Poor, oh, yeah. Poor seemed heavy, bro. Oh, uh, okay. Oh my God. Damn. That's dark. <laughs> and mostly foam. <laughs> God damn it, I'm fucking up. Oh, for all you video watchers, I just fucked up pretty bad. <laughs> all right, all right, yeah, yeah. It's a Scottish Ale, five point six. It's nice. Um, I had it when I was there, and I was like, huh, I get one of these to go. But yeah, that shit has darkness. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I got this. Um, I don't know if you can see. Might not be able to see. You might be able to when you can start to see. But this artist engraved oh, yeah, yeah. big ass mug. You got this as a present, so you know, shout out to the in-laws for this joint. Uh pretty cool present. 
Nice. Um, anyways, my initial thoughts on uh, Radiohead. So Radiohead, I feel like I got into in high school, but like most people probably do, if they're going to get into them or if they're going to hate them. It's usually that time when that starts. Um, so I think my initial thoughts on Radiohead were, were definitely from, you know, hearing Creep on the radio. Yeah. I'm like, oh, this is a good, cool song. Probably didn't know who it was at the time. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, you hear that for a long time. And you're like, okay, cool. Eventually, someone in high school is like, hey, you should listen to this album. And it's definitely not Pablo Honey, what they give you. It's usually something else. And yeah. <laughs> uh this time i guess i was probably skating a lot so a lot of people a lot of this shit was used in like random edits that you'd see people yeah. rocking a lot of people fucking hated radiohead um i'm pretty sure i can't remember which song it was but uh jason dill of you know i guess uh, pr- probably people know jason dill is but he runs a Skateboard yeah, company basically. called Fucking Awesome now. And uh, he used a Radiohead song in one of his video parts back in the day. And it was a big deal because people were like, who the fuck is this? Yeah. And um, that was pretty cool. I think that kind of sparked people listening to Radiohead in the skateboard community. But uh, at the same time, I got into a whole bunch of like British shit at this time. So um, it kind of just fell into my lap and then when you were listening to them pretty on like pretty heavy rotation then i was like all right like what the fuck is this you know i should i should check this out and uh ended up it was uh yeah it was it was basically you being like hey we're gonna we should go to bonnaroo and see radiohead I, was like, yeah, okay, I never really cool. was. I mean, I was. I liked Radiohead at that point, but I wasn't. I don't think I was really like wanted to go to Bonnaroo for Radiohead. I think it's like it was no. more so. I just wanted to go to Bonnaroo because of yeah. all the other yeah and stuff. But it's two. Uh, so 2006. I remember your heavy rotation. 2006 was a lot of my morning jacket. Yeah, um, heavy on the my morning jacket. And the thing is, it's like seeing. See, that's what I was gonna say though. Like seeing seeing Radiohead is what I was like. Damn, this band is like. I've been sleeping on this band. <laughs> yeah. Cause like, I was kind of like not the, the biggest fan either. And I was like, you know, especially like when you, like you said, like when it was like a oh, creep and it was like, okay, you know, and especially creep, but creep is one of those songs that's like, you can definitely tell they released that to fit in with all the other bands like Oasis and the verb and, you know, yeah, like, definitely exactly. that style. Yeah. And I think that's the thing. It's like, that was, that was one of those songs, like, you know, they didn't play it a lot for, they didn't even play it when we saw them, but like, yeah, it was one of those songs that like they put on the, on the album so they could get on the radio. Cause at that time yeah. you need to be on the radio to yeah, make you have money. To break out hit. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So I guess that early two thousands was probably when I was getting into it. And then, uh, yeah, our drive to Bonnaroo kind of made me a fan. I think after seeing that show, but we're going to talk about Bonner in part two of this episode. So, uh, fast bang. I don't know. Wait a month if you want to hear that shit. So, anyways, um, we're going to talk about Pablo Honey, The Benz, and then OK Computer, Kid A, Amnesiac, Hail to the Thief, and then end it within Rainbows, Bonner, and then what is now Kid Amnesia. So, I don't know. Like, Pablo Honey comes out. In 96, I want to say. 93. Wow, fuck me. In the UK. Um, yeah, 93. That's insane. Uh, 90, yeah. It's triple platinum in 2013 in the US. So that's fucking crazy. Um, yeah. Or certified platinum in 95, my best. Um, that's insane. But anyways, yeah, it comes out in 93. That's in like, still in the in the middle of grunge kind of like yeah. grunge is like winding down <coughs> i remember like people like guns and roses are still around like doing hot business at this time um so it's like 
this shit comes out, this like British band, you know, they put out fucking Creep as their single and it blows up, you know. Creep is like this huge thing. People have covered it all over the place. There's like weird covers. Fucking Beck covered it when we saw saw yeah. him. Um, yeah, it's just a weird, it's a weird song. And it's also it's kind of it's sketchy. Kind of sketchy. I was gonna say creepy. <laughs> <laughs> it's but, creepy and sketchy, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so there's that. I don't know. Do you have any? Uh, I, I've, I've got to say, Pablo Honey, out of all their albums, literally all of them, is my least listened to one. Yeah, I would say that for sure. It's like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't really have too many thoughts on it because I don't know these songs like I know the other ones that we're going to talk about. Yeah. I mean, but do you have any thoughts on it or any like, Anything that has like, you know, you've heard or seen that's like, uh, oh man, like this is Pablo Honey's the fucking shit. And like, there are people like Pablo Honey. Apologize, yeah, I mean, but, like, well, like well what that's what I was gonna say. Like, I feel like, yeah, the, the how it goes is that if you're a fan of this album, it's like you're probably older. You know what I mean? You're probably like in your fifties. Mm. You know what I mean? Like you're an older red true radio head fan, whereas like. You know, somebody that's, you know, even younger than us, like let's say 25 as a Radiohead fan is going to be more of a fan of like, OK, computer. And, you know, and even I would say even, you know, the more recent, the a moon shape pool, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, definitely. <clears throat> um, so in 96, Johnny Greenwood said that he'd give this album a seven out of 10. Not bad for an <laughs> album recorded in just two and a half weeks. Oh, damn. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. But at the same time, that's kind of funny that he wouldn't even give it a 10. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. fucking Johnny Green was like, well, on. that's, well, well, yeah. I mean, I guess if you ask now, especially after, if you look at it, like his career and all this stuff that he's done, you know, I mean, yeah. over the decades, especially, in, like I said, now, they doing getting into, you know, scoring, fi- you know, films and ultimately, like, you know, that's like composer status, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's like, definitely. I'm sure he probably thinks hot more highly of his talent than, you know, <laughs> what he fucking did in 93. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's kind of, this is, there's, there's a reissue of this too, just so we can talk about it for a second. Um, August 31st, 2009, EMI reissued Pablo Honey in a collector's edition with the Drill EP tracks and B-sides and alternative takes. They had uh, Radio had a no input on it on the reissue and did not remaster it themselves. So it's kind of interesting. Um, in February 2013, Parlophone, who does that, was uh, bought by Warner Music Group. <clears throat> and April 2016, result of an agreement with Table True Gape and Paula, Warner transferred Radiohead's back catalog to XL Recordings, the collector's editions of Radio Albums issued without Radiohead's approval were removed from streaming services. So you can't even even see you even can't even this is the funniest thing about Radiohead to me. It's like they have all these weird like songs they'll play on tour or like only live and shit. And like sometimes and we're gonna talk about these later on, but they were all like released at some point, you know? But they're they're in these yeah. weird obscure like collections and shit. Yeah. So yeah. Last thing about them is that they're always, I feel like they're always creating music, even, you know, when they say they're not, or, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, and when oh. they do go record an album, there is a lot of like stuff that doesn't make the album because they're, you know what I mean? Yeah. It says, uh, finishing that out, May 2016, XL reissued Radiohead's back catalog on vinyl, including Pablo Honey. So, um, my closing thoughts on this are, <clears throat> on Pablo Honey in general, because we're going to go quick through these albums. Um, I like that they're playing Creep again live. I think it's cool. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think they, you know, you, if you have like this this song, you know, like that people love and people it, it really want you to fucking play it and like people you know, even when we saw them, like the people were just yelling, play creep. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> and it's like, shut the fuck up. They're not going to play it. 
also Beck's version that day was probably better anyway. But it's one of those things like just give into it, man. It's like it's like if you were going to see you know Coldplay and they didn't play Clocks, you'd be pissed. You know, mm-hmm. like that's the song you're gonna you want to hear. You know, or any other huge band and they're hit. You know. Um, but anyways, <clears throat> any closing thoughts on Pablo Honey? Not really. All right. Fuck it then. Moving on to the <laughs> bend. <laughs> Album two. Um, this is all leading up to a crescendo of, of uh something. <coughs> so two years later, uh March ninety-five, Radio Radiohead releases the Bends. <clears throat> which I got to say is an album I've listened to more, um, more recently, like, uh, and like more, I say like more times recently than I did when I was into, into this, like into Radiohead hardcore. <laughs> I think you're frozen. Adam? I think Adam's frozen, so uh, he can <clears throat> chime back in when he's ready. But <clears throat> basically, my thoughts on on uh, the bends are: I really like the song "The Bends," "High and Dry," "Fake Plastic Trees," "My Iron Lungs Good," um, and "Street Spirit Fade Out" is incredible. And oh, Adam's left. Adam has left the <laughs> fucking episode. <laughs> uh, maybe, his, uh, maybe his internet went out or something. So I am going to pause this recording. No, fuck it. I'm just going to keep going. I don't even care. Oh, Adam's calling. Hey, what's up? I don't know. Can you, can you, uh, can you sign back into the, uh, the show? <laughs> All right, cool. That's weird. Okay. You know, I'm still recording. I'm just talking to myself now. (laughs) All right, bye. So anyways, I mean, we'll talk more about it in a second, but I'm going to pour it. While we're waiting for Adam, I'm going to pour the rest of this beer. Um, Like I said, Big shout out to Tenfold Brewing Company. I like their beers. They're really close to me. So I appreciate a brewery being close to my house. Very cool. There he is. Hey, can you hear me? I can. I can. I was just pouring the rest of this beer. <laughs> As big as my fucking nice. head. Hmm. I don't know what happened. Hmm. Zoom's messing up, dude. This whole episode's cursed. Microphone's being weird. I don't know. So, anyways, <clears throat> Adam, I was giving my initial thoughts on the bends. My initial thoughts were to reiterate for you for a second. Um, I think the song, this album has great great music um it you know has the bends high and dry fake plastic trees my yeah. iron my iron lung street spirit fade out which is one of my favorite radiohead songs yeah um and it's i i think it's you know it's top notch this also went through that same situation we were talking about with reissues with all of those like uh, people buying each other so you can find it on vinyl in 2016 go for it but i don't know you got any thoughts on the on uh the bends yeah dude i mean the song the bends itself self-titled song is pretty pretty awesome i would say that's one of my top radio head songs for sure okay and fast but uh fake plastic trees yeah i mean i would like i would say out of the 90 air era, era of radiohead the 90s era of radiohead that the bends is the better album for sure Okay, okay. <clears throat> because, okay, yeah, the 90s, because 
and it set them up too for like what was to come like you know decades later i feel like yeah i mean well you know our uh the ones that we're going to talk about a lot okay computer and kid a they were both well kid a was released in 2000 okay computer was 97 yeah would you put the bends over okay computer or where are you where are you falling on that i think i don't i mean it's like hard to say like let me see like because like uh okay computer i don't want to get so. i don't know it. i think so dude i think so okay this is so the reason we're doing this episode <clears throat> is because this this is when i feel like the start of what i'm going to call like a super album starts for them because like from the bends all the way into hail to the thief it's kind of one thing and it's weird it's like it's a very weird thing and like we're going to talk about it a little bit more in a minute but like it it starts to be the same album for a very long time and then you get in rainbows eventually it kind of breaks the cycle yeah but these four albums that we're about to talk about are five albums are kind of I, I think I think this is where the Benz kind of starts that mythos or whatever. Because like when we are so for people who don't know, um, in the early two thousands, there was a big theory that Radiohead had this like kind of giant uh, collection of songs that they were just like kind of pieced together into albums, and then uh, in some way, if you took different ones. And line them up after each other, it would actually be a cohesive, long ass album. And it was like this big theory for a long time. And if you do it, if you find the right playlist, it actually works. <clears throat> and eventually, we're going to talk about this with Kid Amnesia, but and because that's what they did, um, it was real after all. Surprise. But um, yeah, it was this this big theory that, and like no one no one would fucking confirm this, but it was this big theory that they were they had all these songs and they just kept making music, kept making music. And then they just like pick songs and put them on albums to where they thought they might fit. So yeah, I think the bends is where this kind of starts. Like, I think it's is the, this is a, this is the start of this era. I want to say, you know? Yeah. You, you think you agree? Oh, for sure. <clears throat> yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Do you remember this, by the way? Like people just online talking about like if you put this song next to this. Yeah, song. I do. I mean, I do. I mean, there's been all kinds of theories, and that's what's been like interesting about them too. Is that like the cult following and all the conspiracies, and you know, all the people with their Radiohead tattoos. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like I mean, it's 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 fun to watch, but it's like I'm not. I mean, I'm definitely not into it enough to get tattooed. Uh, you know, but no. <clears throat> No, no, I'm not gonna get a, a paranoid Android tattoo or whatever. Not gonna but, do it. Um, but, but uh, yeah, but it has been interesting. That's what I was gonna say is that you know they're experimental and like you know it's like it's kind of like you know I, I don't know how to really explain it, but like the I guess the timeline too. They know that like you know oh we made this song in '97 that can now be relevant today in 2005 or what you know whatever it is or even you know 2022. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, the, this stuff is kind of timeless. It's not like, you know, it's oh, like, you know, like I said, like you said, you know, in 95, when all these grunge bands were still around are kind of starting to phase out, like they were like doing something completely different and more electronic and, you know, inspired by different genres of music. Yeah. Uh, you got to keep but, in mind, uh, this is still the same. This is around the same time that people like Gas Punk are getting really big. Yeah. And, so like you're taking influences from a lot of different stuff, house music, yeah. uh, nine, 90s raves were a thing. Yeah. Um, so the, all of this is like, you know, congealing into what eventually is going to be Kid Amnesia, but, uh, you know, 30 years later. But um, <clears throat> yeah, moving on, I think the Ben, I don't have like too much to talk about the Ben, um, but because again, it's another album that I didn't listen to too much. Um, yeah. But you can, um, it's it's a it's an album that, I mean, even if you if you just look it up, it's 
Johnny Greenwood said it's a turning point for Radiohead. So like we were yeah. just saying, it's it's when this super album started. Um, yeah. And it was in people's like best years lists and whatever. And it in 2015, Selway, who is part of uh, is Philip Selway, the drummer, um, said that this is the origin of Radiohead's aesthetic. So, um, makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense to me as well. Uh, and it, it's if you listen, so that's why people, I think, we were just talking about Pablo Honey is kind of like this one off thing that kind of got them on a trajectory, right? And then yeah. you get the bends where this is the start of what is going to be the next 15 years yeah. of what this band is. So moving on. Um, the Benz. All right. So you want to, what's your, what's, well, give your top two songs on this album real quick. On the Benz? Yeah. The, the Benz. Okay. <laughs> and then um, mid look again. Mine is Street Spirit Fade Out and probably the Benz. Okay. I think it's the Ben. I think the song "The Bends" is the one that Jason Dill skates to. I can't remember though. Anyway, <clears throat> moving on. Album three, OK Computer. Okay, this one. All right, so Kit, this is where we really want. We're gonna cut off after this album, and then talk right. about Kid A, and then Amnesia, Amnesiac, and then Hail the Thief. Pretty quick. No, we'll cut off after Kid A. And then Amnesia, I can hail the thief and in rainbows. We'll talk about in a minute. But anyway, um, this and Kid A were, are, oh, I'm going to say are, are defining albums for my taste in music, I think. Um, uh, it's it's kind of heavy to say. But um, I'm going to say the, no, that is heavy. That's pretty fucked. I'm going to say, I'm going to say. That's a pulse. Thing, man. That's a pulse. Uh, that's a hot take, bro. Uh, no, I'm going to say this is one of the, these are one of those, like, those two albums are, were in heavy rotation in uh, yeah. my, my CD player. Growing, like going to work, going to school fucking hanging out when we were working together in fast food yeah. and other restaurant bullshit um yeah later the latter half of high school into college and today um these are these are top top of the list type of shit for me personally what do you think yeah i mean like i said like I don't know. Like, I mean, these albums are good and it's the defying Radiohead, but like, I know a lot of people, it's probably blasphemy for to say this, but like, I like the old, like the later Radiohead stuff. Like, and I know we haven't gotten into it yet, but like in Rainbows and even a Moonshade Pool, like, I mean, that's, that's actually hot take. The only final album I have of Radiohead. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Love, love a hot take, motherfuckers. Okay. But yeah, um, Moonshade Pool, super underrated. I don't care what anybody <clears throat> says. You know, I have warmed up to that album a lot. Um, I did not, I haven't, I haven't really cared for the latter Radiohead stuff in a while. Yeah. And like those, those particular ones have kind of like, um, Moonshade Pool in particular, King of Limbs still not, doesn't hit for me really. But, um, King, but I don't know. Like King, that, that's what I was going to get into too. I know we're like, this is like going to go on forever if we get into all the other stuff. Well, but we'll, like, stop it. we'll stop it. Do it. But yeah, right, it's we'll like, stop. but even that yeah. I like, yeah. Even King Limbs I like though. That's what I was going to say. That's the later stuff I like. It's like, cause he was getting okay. more into like the electronic stuff, like doing the, even like the stuff that he was like doing, you know, like live shows with like uh flying Lotus and stuff, you know, like DJ sets. It's like, yeah, you know, yeah. love that. That's that cool. Show. That's cool. Um, but we'll get we can get into that once we talk about in rainbows because that's a that's yeah. the second turning point for radio. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. That's the starting point for all that, I think. <laughs> yeah. So um, and there's a reason. 
there it's kind of interesting um but okay computer um i think this and kid a and we're gonna talk about it individually but i think this and kid a are front to back you can listen to them straight um yeah it's all great um standouts for me personally are exit music for a film and yeah uh, probably no surprises and yeah i mean there's uh, obviously there's you know karma police on this which is a hit uh paranoid android i think was a single uh, yeah it's weird it's a it's um it's a very i mean it's a very highly score like high score high highly reviewed score eh. high <laughs> my brain just broke bro <laughs> that's like huh <laughs> it scored very highly on reviews across the board five stars from uh fucking rolling stone and pitch for 10 out of 10 uh, which is if you can get a thing that's five out of five on pitch or on Rolling Stone and then a ten out of ten on Pitchfork, those are two, yeah. two completely different crowds. Like, yeah. So good for them. <clears throat> a bunch of other sites. This is this is probably their best review, like reviewed album. I'd say. Yeah, I'd say that too. Um, oh, this is funny. There's a quote from DJ Shadow for this. Um, a lot of people have taken OK Computer and said, this is the yardstick. If I can attain something half as good, I'm doing pretty well. But I've never heard anything really derivative of OK Computer, which is interesting as it shows that what Radiohead were doing was probably even more complicated than it seemed. Pretty interesting. Yeah. I yeah. agree. Um, after watching um, quite a few live concerts just as background noise um for work or whatever this particular songs off of this album seem hard as shit to play live and they yeah. do it you know yeah, lots of beats very, and you know, boops complex, and whatever yeah. Yeah. but i don't know i what what do you think uh highlights for you for this or do you have any thoughts on it i mean it's like i said it's it's I mean, it's definitely the, one of the better albums from, you know, favorite for me, but it's still, you know, but yeah, like you said, exit music for a film and karma, please. I think are the, the standouts and paranoid Android. And I don't know. It's like, I don't know if that was a single, but I feel like, yeah, that's like I said, that's the song that the cult following that had yeah. you know, that made that song stand out. Yeah. So <clears throat> this is also um, a point in time when, they were very very big okay so uh in this particular album when they were going on tour for it they ended up doing okay a single a paranoid andrew was the lead single cool oh damn. um yeah i said it was this one right i don't know i'm fucking backing up dude i don't know this beer this beer is hitting pretty good but anyway. <laughs> uh, oh my god i'm looking oh one sec one sec everyone one sec tour uh, 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 uh. no it wasn't this it was uh it was okay computer tour okay so so what we were talking about with the Ben started this whole cult, uh, Radiohead aesthetic, right? OK Computer is like the establishing point of that. The, the Ben's are kind of like, they kind of, you know, beat around what they're going to do. OK Computer is yeah. the start. Um, they were fucking huge at this point, you know. And they get asked to uh, headline Glastonbury. And June 28th, 97. Um, this freaked Tom York out real bad. Okay. He, he freaked the fuck out. Um, and they had a bunch of technical problems on stage. Tom almost walked off. He was almost like stressing so hard he left. 
Um, performance was great, though. Cemented Radiohead as a major live act. Um, Rolling Stone de described it as an absolute triumph. And in, and in 2004, <coughs> Q, Q, which I think is a magazine. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it was a magazine in the UK. Called it the greatest concert of all time. Okay. Um, <laughs> but, but anyway. I'll say it, man. <laughs> so um, this particular show and their fame is leading us into what is Kid A. Um, so they take a couple years. <clears throat> Remember, this is 2007 or 97 when, uh, when this is released, when uh, OK Computer is released. Take a couple of years to make what is Kid A, right? This is October 2nd, 2000. It's recorded in 99 through April 2000. So it took a few months to do it, four months, right? Yeah. And I think, well, I know this. I know this is a fact. But um, so this kind of like, this is also a continuation. We're, we're still talking about this, this uh, Radiohead aesthetic, right? This is a continuation of what OK Computer is. And we're going to talk about OK Computer, Kid A, and Amnesiac almost as one thing um, in the next few hits of this show. But anyways, <clears throat> when uh, that whole thing went down with Glastonbury, Tom York, and this is very public knowledge, but he, he freaked the fuck out when he had to record there. And uh, well, when they were doing that show, they recorded it, obviously. Uh, but he freaked out and like had almost a breakdown and his, uh, you know, really was like having like a holy shit moment. We're fucking famous type of situation going on. And mm -hmm. there is a song on this album, which I think, and has been um, said by multiple members of Radiohead is their best song ever. And which is <clears throat> fuck, which is how to disappear completely. Yeah, Track that's what four. I was gonna say. Um, yeah, so um, that song is about Tom and basically um, describing how stressed the fuck out he was at Glastonbury and how he just wanted to float away. And get the fuck out of there because it was you know scary and stressed out and whatever but um <clears throat> this is this is the album dude like i don't i don't know what how you feel about it but this is the one like this shit stayed in my seat like a, a hard yeah. hard minute <laughs> um do you have any initial thoughts on it um <clears throat> No, just that like yeah like you said like how to disappear completely is definitely the the better like the best song from the album and that yeah like i think it's a defining album for him like you know for it like, again for it that you know decade of you know 2000s yeah um <clears throat> so let's um get a um pitchfork and uh the times Ranked Kid A, the greatest album of the 2000s, which is pretty interesting. Yeah. Um, 2006, Time Kid A, one of the 100 best albums, calling it the opposite of easy listening and the weirdest album to ever <laughs> sell a million copies. <laughs> yeah. But also a testament to just how complicated pop music can be. Yeah. Um, oh, Rolling Stone, Pitchfork, and The Times ranked it as the greatest album in the 2000s. It's, um, it's, man, in 20, 2011, Rolling Stone named Everything in Its Right Place the 24th best song in the 2000s, describing it as oddness at its most hummable. Yeah, Strange. that's crazy. Um, this is what I was going to say, too, is that, you know, the fact that it is so weird, it gave, you know, it kind of opened the door for everybody else, all these other bands, like, especially noise pop and you know, these different bands like indie bands from you know they're like mid 2000s to now like you know just to be weird and experiment with different electronic you know instruments yeah absolutely this um oh, fuck 
just threw up. All right, great. Um, in 2020, this was Rolling Stones uh, number 20, 500 greatest albums of all time. And <clears throat> there's a bunch of, they do a hundred bit of weird at rankings, but that one's pretty yeah. notable. 20, number 20, that's pretty insane. Yeah. Been, been re- reissued a bunch of times, that same thing with the 2016 XL reissue. Um, oh, there's um, other weird versions of this album you can check out. Uh, 2017, um, there's an OK Computer reissue called OK Not OK. And it was basically 97 and 2017. Um, they released, you know, this whole, it's like an early demo type of version type of thing. But this is, uh, this dude, this album... I don't know why, but this one has always stayed with me. Like, this one is probably my, I don't know, I don't want to say it's my favorite, but it's like, it's really up there as far as Radiohead albums go for me. Yeah. Uh, do you do you feel a certain way about it, or do you, what do you think? <laughs> no, I mean, it's like, for me, it's like, you know, like, as being introduced to Radiohead, like, that's definitely the, the first album you, like, listen to, but, you know, it just feel like it's, for me, it's like the st- stepping stones. It's not necessarily like the, my top, you know, album of theirs. Yeah. I think that, that, you know, and especially like only seeing them once, you know, which well, I know we'll get into later, but like that's definitely submits in rainbows as my favorite album. Mm. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. This one, if you haven't gone, check this one out. <clears throat> um, go and check it out. Um, like we said earlier, how to disappear completely national anthem everything in its right place optimistic idiot tech yeah. these are all motion picture motion picture soundtrack yeah. all highlights um it's a yeah. great album we'll say i do i do like national anthem though that is a really good solid track from this yeah also if you're you know collecting vintage skate videos national anthem uh tony hawk skated to national anthem in the audio video one step beyond nice. in 2003 <laughs> i don't know supposedly it's his birthday today dude mm-hmm. I saw someone out of my boy t hawk you know what i'm saying um <clears throat> all right so we've established this whole like timeline right yeah now i think time to say goodbye for part one and we'll come back part two it see you in fucking june yeah. And yeah, it's been your boys. Hope you um, you liked this episode. Uh, if you did, go ahead and uh, check us out on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, whatever. Subscribe to all the places you like um, for all the updates that we do. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, check us out in June if you like this episode for part two. 